Hello and welcome to Emmanuel Loughborough and our Sunday service. My name is Steve, I'm one of the ministers at Emmanuel. It's great that you can join us. A uh, particularly warm welcome to you if you're new, uh, if you're visiting us so to speak, it's great that you can be part of our worship today. Uh, and perhaps you've uh, started watching us since, since the lockdown uh, and you'd like to find out a little bit more about the church, well, do, do please visit our website. Uh, do look on our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, you'll find lots of great things on there, including some thought for the days uh, every weekday. Uh, also, please do get in touch with us. You can uh, contact us via email uh, at office at emmanuel-loughborough.org. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, we'd love to hear uh, what you uh, are making of our worship. We'd love you to be able to get in touch. Uh, so that we can connect with you and share a little bit more about who we are and what we do as a church. And one of the ways that you can connect with us is by taking part in After Hours. After Hours is our regular Sunday evening meeting, which takes place via Zoom, in which we meet together with one another, we pray, we reflect on God's word, and we encourage one another. Uh, details for how to be involved are in the church notice sheet, uh, if you're not on the church mailing list but would like to be part of it, uh, then please do contact the office at that email address I just gave uh, and we'd love to give you information about how you can be part of it. Finally, I just want to draw your attention to something really exciting that's going to be happening uh, in a couple of weeks' time. Saturday the 11th of July uh, at 8 o'clock in the evening, we're going to be hosting a summer quiz and uh, we're going to be raising money uh, for Tear Fund to support the work they're doing in supporting uh, some of the hardest hit people uh, around the world uh, by the coronavirus. So uh, you can join as a, a group of six, you can join as an individual uh, and, uh, and form part of a group on the night, but we would love you uh, to be part of that and to, uh, to join in that community, uh, to have fun and maybe learn a thing or two along the way as well. I think that's all the notice for the time being. So why don't we just take a moment just to be quiet, to still ourselves and to recognise the presence of God in this place. When our Bible reading later today, which uh, Kat will help interpret for us as she preaches. Jesus speaks of the Holy Spirit as one who quenches our thirst, who satisfies our deepest longings and desires. And so with that in mind, let's hear these words which God speaks through the prophet Isaiah to us. He says, come all you who are thirsty. Come to the waters, and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend your money on what is not bread, and your labour on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me, and eat what is good, and you will delight in the richest Let's pray together as we begin our worship. Father God, we come to you today because you have called us to yourself. Lord Jesus, we come to you today because you have freely given yourself to us. Holy Spirit, we come to you today because you alone can satisfy the thirst of our souls. Come then, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people. Open our eyes, inhabit our praises, flood us with the love of Christ, and give us confidence to know and call God Father. We ask all this to your praise and glory in Jesus Christ. Amen. So can I encourage you, wherever you are, to join with me in singing this song of praise to Almighty God. Mm -hmm. 
Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will sing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glory. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering, though there's pain in the offering. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will sing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say. Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Your glorious Our God is great and greatly to be praised. We've just sung God's praises with our lips. And yet when we take a moment to reflect with God, we know that those praises ring hollow if they're not matched with lives which are wholly devoted to bringing God glory. So let's take a moment in quiet to reflect with the Holy Spirit on the ways that we have failed to live as God's people. Let's invite God's Spirit to search us and to bring before him those things we know that we've done wrong, which we need to say sorry for, where we need his help and his grace to amend and change. God's word declares to us that if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But God's word also assures us that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, to 
help us express our sorrow for our sin and our confidence in God's saving help. Let's use these words to pray together. You asked for my hands that you might use them for your purpose. I gave them for a moment, then withdrew them for the work was hard. You asked for my mouth to speak out against injustice. I gave you a whisper that I might not be accused. You asked for my eyes to see the pain of poverty. I closed them for I did not want to see. You asked for my life that you might work through me. I gave a small part that I might not get too involved. Lord, forgive my calculated efforts to serve you, only when it is convenient for me to do so, only in those places where it is safe for me to do so, and only with those who make it easy to do so. Father, forgive me, renew me, Send me out as a usable instrument that I may take seriously the meaning of your cross. And so we hear these words of confidence and forgiveness. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of his Spirit all our days. Amen. Charlotte now is going to lead us in our prayers for the world to end it. We're now going to take some time to pray together. Father God, we pray for our world at this time as the coronavirus pandemic continues. Please slow and halt the spread of the disease and reduce the numbers of deaths. We pray particularly for countries such as the US and Brazil that have seen an increase in cases recently. We also pray for those around the world living in poverty for whom starvation during lockdown is a very real threat. Please be with governments, aid organisations and local charities as they seek to meet needs. Please bless the persecuted church who are used to having fellowship online and using innovative ways to share their faith. Thank you for the increased interest in Christianity many missionaries are seeing at this time and the many new opportunities they have to serve the communities in which they live. Please give them wisdom as they seek to answer questions and disciple new believers. Father God, we pray for the UK. We pray for comfort for those mourning, provision for those who have lost jobs and strength for those suffering with mental health at this difficult time. Thank you that we have seen a significant drop in the cases and deaths from COVID-19. We ask that this trend would continue and that you would protect us from a second wave, especially as we see lockdown restrictions eased further. Please give wisdom to our government and their advisers that the right decisions for our country would be made. Father God, we thank you that churches are able to open up more from the 4th of July. Please be with the leadership of Emmanuel as they plan how to move ahead safely. Thank you that despite lockdown, we have still been able to worship and have fellowship as a community dispersed. We also thank you for the Alpha Online course that has been happening at Emmanuel and for those who've been coming. Over the next few weeks, we pray that your spirit will be at work, revealing truth and opening hearts to the joy, peace and promise of the new life that is found in you. As many people continue to seek reasons for hope at this time, we pray that the UK Church and our community at Emmanuel would be bold in sharing the hope we have in Jesus. All of us have found this time challenging in different ways and to various degrees. Father God, we thank you and praise you that you are our firm foundation, that you are always with us, that you love us, and that because of Jesus, we can be a people of hope, not fear. May we honour and glorify you in our words, actions and thoughts in the coming week. Let us finish by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. We're now just going to watch a short video which has been sent to us by Ben and Katie Ray, who are our mission partners for CMS, the Church Mission Society, serving in Tanzania. Uh, it just gives us a bit of an overview as to the situation that uh, they've faced with the coronavirus, some of the struggles they've been through, uh, as well as the ways that we can continue to support them in prayer. Uh, and one of the other practical ways that we've continued to support them is by giving them uh, an extra thousand uh, pounds from the church's tithe, budget uh, to help meet their needs in a particularly tough uh, and lean time for them. So let's watch, let's be encouraged and let's pray for them. Asante Sala! Thank you so much from the Ray family for all your prayers and financial support over the years. Without your help, we simply couldn't be here working with the inspirational people that we do at Name and Crafts. CMS, our mission agency, is a key player in our work here too. They help to resource and equip us with everything we need to continue our mission right here. CMS have helped to connect us with many of our wonderful link churches and are always there in times of an emergency. CMS has been particularly supportive during this uncertain time of the COVID-19 pandemic. They've arranged Zoom meetings and WhatsApp conversations whenever we've needed help or advice. It's also reassuring that they've arranged really good medical insurance for us, just in case we need to return home to the UK. As you know, out here, we're working with the Anglican Church of Tanzania. Its project, Name of Crafts, employs, trains and empowers over 100 people with various disabilities. The project has won a place in many people's hearts over the years, particularly with visitors and tourists from across the globe who have enjoyed our guest house, cafe and workshops. But the coronavirus pandemic has changed everything in recent months. We've had to shut down the Namer Centre to protect our staff and there'll be very few tourists coming through our town for many months to come. Our artisans are still receiving a full wage currently, but in order to sustain this, many have had to train in making PPE for local medical workers. We currently produce 800 masks, 120 face shields and 50 gowns per week and we're raising money for this through our website. In order to remain out here, working amongst this most vulnerable people group, we ourselves have an ongoing need for financial and prayer support. If you feel called to give towards us being able to continue here in Tanzania, or if you want to know our latest prayer requests, please visit our personal page on the CMS website. No one really knows what the long-term impact of this virus will be in each country but we're confident that Name of Crafts is God's work and he will lead and guide us in setting the future vision for the coming years. This is a challenging time, but also a time of hope and opportunity to bring God's transformational kingdom right here where we are. We appreciate that all of our supporters understand this and we're so grateful that you've got behind us throughout. We so appreciate all of the encouragement and the care that we have received from so many people and churches along the way. We literally couldn't do this without you. Mungo Abariki!
Hi Andrew. Hi Steve. Good to see you. And you. So as you know over the past few weeks we've been uh, interviewing different people asking about how life has changed for them over the past few months. Uh, so now it's your turn. Um, so a lot of us uh, watching this will, will recognise you of course but for those who maybe don't recognise you perhaps you could just share a little bit about who you are and what you do. Yeah of course. Yeah so my name's Andrew Overton Brown. Uh, married to Charlotte, we've been part of Emmanuel for about a year and a half now. For the last about nine months, I've been working for Emmanuel as the director of worship ministries. So yeah, that's me. Brilliant. Uh, how have things changed for you since uh, middle of March when when everything started getting locked down? Yeah, so things have changed quite a bit. Uh, when lockdown started, um, we came down to Charlotte's parents in Devon. And we are still here now. That's where we spent the last kind of three months of lockdown. And I guess my role's changed quite a bit too with what I do with church. Obviously, we're not meeting uh, and doing church services. Um, we've had to rethink the way we do church. So I'm still kind of coordinating the worship just in a very different way. Um, kind of pulling together the video that we do on Sundays, still overseeing the music. Um, been very blessed to have Jamie Davis Jones from who's part of the worship team at Emmanuel who's got great music production skills um, actually producing the worship tracks for us and that's been a real help to me as I've been able to focus my time on making the Sunday video uh, that we we put out on YouTube every Sunday. So uh, a complete reshift really of your 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 role um, can you give us a bit of an insight into what actually goes on to make that 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 Sunday service that we watch on YouTube happen? What, what do you have to do? Yeah, of course. Well, the short answer is a lot of sat on my laptop. Um, yeah, it's receiving the sections of the service from whoever's leading, preaching, doing the prayers, um, all, all come my way. And I'll kind of put all those sections of video into one long video. I'll add in the music tracks once they've been produced. Um, you know, add in the liturgy and the, the sound effects, the music and all that sort of stuff and just kind of make it all fits together. Um, so yeah, a lot of my week just sat on my laptop um, on the video editing software, putting everything together. Uh, and is that something you knew how to do beforehand or is that something you've had to pick up on the go? Uh, no, it's not anything I've ever done before. So the first few weeks of doing it, um, the process was a lot longer. I'm getting a bit quicker at it now. So yeah, initially I was watching lots of YouTube tutorials of how to do X, Y, and Z on um, video editing software. Um, but yeah, I think I've been picking things up quite well and yeah, it's a lot smoother process now. Well, it so, so, certainly looks convincing from, uh, for, from my view watching, watching it on a Sunday. Thank you. Uh, so you, you kind of mentioned a little bit about the, the, the musical worship side of things. Um, and Jamie kind of using some of his know-how in terms of producing it. Can you give us a bit of an insight into what 
what that takes behind the scenes as well. Yeah, of course. Um, so yes, yeah, so after receiving the service plans from the service leader, um, I'll kind of pick the songs um, for what we're going to be singing on Sunday, send that over to Jamie, and uh, Jamie does a lot of the recording himself. He's singing on most of the tracks, playing his guitar. Um, Charlotte, my wife Charlotte, does a lot of the backing vocal singing. I'll sometimes record a guitar track as well. And once everything's recorded, that'll get sent to Jamie, and he will work his magic, which I don't totally understand, and send me back a really nice sounding track. Brilliant. So you've got people scattered around the country contributing different di different parts um, into to go into the Sunday service. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Because different people, um, you know, Jamie's on furlough, so he's up with his parents in Newcastle. We're down in Devon. Um, we've had other people contribute in different places. So yeah, kind of people scattered around bringing that stuff together for our Sunday service. Amazing. So what have been some of the um, some of the joys of of the past few? Uh, a few months some of the challenges as well i think maybe the joys is the fact that lockdown's created a slower pace of life um, so i've still obviously i've still been working throughout the week but just having a bit more time to enjoy uh, being outside god's creation um, i've taken up running again which i haven't done for a number of years um, which i've really enjoyed doing so that's been a real blessing um, definitely been challenges as well obviously you know, learning new skills has been enjoyable as well as a challenge um, work related. Uh, a number of my family members did catch coronavirus though. So uh, both my, my dad and two of my grandparents had coronavirus and all three of them were in hospital at different points. So that was quite stressful. Um, fortunately, all three of them pulled through and are out of hospital and I fully recovered now. So that's, that was a blessing. Brilliant. Oh, pray, praise the Lord for that. Um, so looking Looking ahead, obviously uh, we've just heard this this week about um, the opportunity to begin looking at how we meet together in person um, to worship. But we're also being told that um, that singing is off the cards for the time being. So, uh, how do you foresee some of the challenges around around that moving forward? Yeah, it's interesting um, to see how things are developing and how things are relaxing. Um, so short answer don't know yet but i'm you know i'll have to have a think about that along with you know yourself and michael and um, we'll have to figure out what the best way is to to go forward um yeah services won't be going straight back to how they were before lockdown there'll definitely be a long process of easing back into things um, music will not be as main a feature as it has been in services before lockdown so yeah i guess wisdom is needed to kind of figure out the best way to do what we can while obeying the rules and best serving the congregation yeah and can i just ask personally how how have you found it um not uh, that obviously the, the music uh, part of our worship is such a central part of uh, your gifts and what you contribute to the life of the church how have you personally found it having to worship in a slightly different way obviously not having the, the same congregational kind of singing as um as you're used to yeah i yeah, obviously I really enjoy worshiping with music with other people. Um, so it's definitely, yeah, different and, and a challenge to kind of not be able to worship in the same way when singing with a large group of other people is really important. But yeah, it's just having to kind of, like everyone else, rethink how we, what it means to be church, what it means to worship God. Um, yeah, so it's not the same, but yeah, it's still being able to, remember that it's not about the necessarily primarily about the music or the setting or who you're with that we can worship God wherever we are um, with whatever means we have brilliant thank you yeah that's really encouraging so finally finally how can how can we be praying for you and in your role especially uh, not only now but in the weeks to come yeah I think um yeah, just be praying for wisdom and ideas and creativity to know, um, to figure out the best thing that we can do. Like I said already, that we can follow the guidelines that the government and the Church of England puts out um, to be able to use music and the services um, in the best way to serve the congregation and, and glorify God. Brilliant. Well, can we pray for you now? Yeah, please do. Father God, I just thank you so much uh, for uh, 
uh, your grace to us, even in the midst of um, what's been a very testing time for, for, for so many people. Lord, I thank you uh, that you have enabled uh, Andrew with Charlotte uh, to, to spend time together with family in, in Devon over this time. Lord, we thank you that uh, this has been an opportunity for Andrew to, to get back into running and to enjoy uh, your creation. Lord, thank you for the way that you have enabled him to, uh, to find new ways of uh, expressing his worship and, and, and seeking to help us uh, as a church community express our worship as well uh, through those Sunday services and putting them together. Lord, I pray that you would continue to fill Andrew with your spirit, uh, that you would give him wisdom and discernment along with everyone else involved to know how we can uh, worship you even uh, as restrictions may still be in place in terms of what we can and can't do. And I pray uh, for, for us as, uh, as a church community, Lord, that we would um, be able to take to heart the, the, those, uh, those words that Andrew's spoken about, our worship being our, our whole lives, not just the, uh, the offering of uh, our, our lips. And Lord, we pray that that might be more and more true for us. Lord, that you would uh, use this time to enable us to be more creative, even more expressive in our worship, in all that we are and all that we do. So Lord, we thank you for Andrew. Thank you for all that he contributes. And um, we pray your blessing upon him now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Steve. Uh, thank you so much for, for, for joining us and helping us to, uh, to get a bit of an insight into your world. No problem. Thanks, Steve. Bye. Bye, see ya.
Today's reading is taken from John chapter 4, verses 1 to 26. Jesus talks with a Samaritan woman. Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptising more disciples than John. Although in fact it was not Jesus who baptised, but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, you're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, You have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will, be, will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, Go, call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, You are right when you say that you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, Believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming, and has now come, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is Spirit, and his worshippers must worship in the Spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah, called Christ, is coming, and when he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The woman said to him, Sir, Give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. Holy Spirit, quencher of thirst, open our ears and our hearts to hear from you now through this passage. Amen. Hello, I'm Kat. I'm training for ordination um, and my placement is at Emmanuel and so you might have seen me pop up here every now and then. I wonder if we can imagine the desire to never be thirsty again. It is difficult for us here in England where delicious, safe, cold water is available in our taps 24 hours a day. It's hard for us to really understand thirst within the context of survival. For most of us, I imagine drinking is something that most of the time we quite enjoy that happens to be essential. 
I counted up the number of different hydrating drinks that we have in our house and I got at least 12. The significance of water in the world in which Jesus and this woman were living and also in the lives of people in some places of our world today is something that we can't really ever get our heads around. Life revolves around finding water to drink in places where water is not readily available because water is essential for survival. The human body can only survive a maximum of three days without water and actually at that point it would not be in any kind of good healthy state. Travelling from one place to another means moving from one source of water to the next. Many hours in a day are filled with the walk to and from the river or the well and of course that also means carrying the heavy buckets and carriers of water back to the family home. This passage about the woman at the well is so rich with depth and meaning. There's so much that we can learn about Jesus through the way that he talks to this woman with kindness and respect. There's so much that we can learn about our preconceptions of others and we are challenged by Jesus's love and welcome of those that society has cast out and marginalised. I'm not sure, however, that we can ever really understand the longing that must have been in this woman's voice when she asks Jesus to give her water so she never has to be thirsty again. So she never has to make the long and difficult journey to the well, to the exhausting walk back with heavy receptacles of water. We're not told why she was there in the middle of the day, the hottest part of the day. Perhaps it was because of her social situation as an unmarried woman living with a man who was not her husband, having previously had five husbands. Perhaps she was shamed, excluded, ostracized, cast out. Whatever the reason, it is clear that she would have jumped on the chance not to have to go to the well every day for water. All that being said, and being really important in how we approach the meaning of this passage in John's Gospel, I do think that even if we can't ever fully understand the place of water in people's lives and existence because of where we live, we do all know a little bit of what it feels to be thirsty. When you've gone for a long hike and realised towards the end that your water bottle is not going to last. When you've been exercising outside and you come back desperate for a drink. When you suddenly realise that you've been so busy you haven't drank anything for hours and that's why you have that niggling headache. I had a little look at what actually happens to our bodies when we are thirsty. And actually, by the time we feel thirst our bodies are already dehydrated. Our thirst mechanism lags behind our actual level of hydration. When we begin to get dehydrated, our brain tissue fluid decreases, um, which reduces brain volume and temporarily affects cell function. Kidneys retain more water to um, enable other bodily functions to be unaffected by the lack of water in the body. Our blood thickens as it becomes more concentrated and this puts more pressure on our cardiovascular system by increasing the heart rate to maintain blood pressure. And this of course leads to increased risk of uh, exhaustion or collapse, especially when exercising or walking. The body's ability to maintain temperature is also hampered through dehydration, um, which risks hypothermia, overheating. Being thirsty is not good news. As I've just explained, the body's response to dehydration is not good and multiple systems are affected by the lack of water. This is why the deep primal instinct to find water is so effective. Our brains are cleverly monitoring um, the fluid levels in our bodies all the time and we're triggered to find water before it is too late. During lockdown, Tim and I have been watching all the Star Wars films 
and we got to number seven last weekend. And in this film, there's a scene where one of the characters, Finn, has been walking through the hot desert sands of the planet Jakku and comes across a small village where he desperately runs from tent to tent, begging for water. Then he sees a water trough um, where a giant sort of hippo-like alien creature um, is snorting and drinking the water there. He stumbles over and he frantically begins to drink and then he stops for a moment because clearly the water is, is disgusting and his drinking buddy is not particularly pleasant. And then he resumes drinking because his need for water is so overwhelming. Hydration is essential to humans, is essential for life. And so what of our Holy Spirit hydration level? Here in this passage, Jesus makes a simple yet mind-blowingly profound link between um, thirst for water and thirst for God. Just as our bodies need water for life, so our souls need the Spirit for life. In verse 10, Jesus tells the woman that he can give living water. And then in verse 14, he says that the water he can give will permanently hydrate and even more will become a spring of water welling up to eternal life. I'll come back to, to that in a moment, but this is where the woman, I like to imagine rather excitedly, asks Jesus for this water so she never has to come to the well again. So she will never be thirsty again. And as in other places in the Gospels, we see here a fairly significant misunderstanding of what Jesus is talking about and who Jesus is. The woman thinks that Jesus will give her some kind of actual physical drinkable water. In other places, um, there's examples where, for example, the re religious leaders misunderstand Jesus' words about rebuilding the temple as rebuilding the actual physical temple, whereas Jesus was talking about himself. And here too, Jesus is talking about himself. Jesus is using our human understanding of water and the absolute non-negotiable necessity of it for life and survival to describe the same importance of the life that flows from the Trinity. God the Father, the maker of all things. God the Son, Jesus Christ, our, our Saviour and Redeemer. And God the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. Words that we sometimes, maybe often say in prayers. If we jump ahead slightly to um, John's uh, Gospel in chapter 7, verse 38, Jesus repeats the same explanation of the Spirit as living water. It says, On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that point the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. When Jesus ascended into heaven to be with his Father, the Holy Spirit was sent in his place to us, to guide, to comfort, help and nourish with living water. A spiritual water that can fill satisfy, complete, and even overflow to eternal life. And that is some water. The Holy Spirit is the water. And when we accept the drink, the well within us is the gift of salvation, which will never run dry. Our freedom from sin and acceptance by grace into God's kingdom is not something we have to keep going back to some place or some act to renew somehow. It's not like a physical well that you have to keep going back to and draw water. It is a well that once opened will never run dry. The physical well that Jesus and the woman are standing at is known, it was known as Jacob's well. It's a historical source of water. 
In Genesis 33 verses 18 to 20, it describes how Jacob came to a place called Shechem and bought the land where he then erected his tent and built an altar. The well's not mentioned by name in Genesis, but it's the same location as this passage in John's Gospel, where the Samaritan woman refers to the well as Jacob's well. It has been there for generations. Countless trips have been made to draw water from its depth. But this is not the water source that this woman needs. I like the almost comedy that we get at verse 12, where the woman asks Jesus, Are you greater than our father Jacob? Well, yes, actually, Jesus is greater. He is the living well of water that will never run dry. And I got to wondering, what what is our Jacob's well? What do we rely on in our lives for water to quench our thirst? There may be things that are deep, that are solid. There may be things that are good and helpful, but... What things do we turn to time after time that aren't actually the true well of living water? Maybe things like um, reading books, reading books about the Bible, learning about the Bible, but perhaps not actually turning to the Bible itself and spending time in God's word. What about things like going to church, going to church regularly, going to church semi-regularly, going to church on important occasions, something that's good to do. What about being a nice person, trying to be a good Christian, whatever whatever that is? We're listening to sermons, listening to podcasts, the faith of our family and our friends that we resonate with and we learn from. Do we turn to things like socialising to quench our thirst? Things like experiences, life experiences, entertainment, perhaps travel, not so much at the moment, but perhaps travel is something that's important to us routine, work, employment. All of these things can be good things. All of these things can help teach us about Jesus, can support us in our journey of faith, can bring us life and enjoyment. But none of these things can quench our thirst forever. None of these things are a well of living water that will never run dry. The only place from which we can drink and never be thirsty again, is the Holy Spirit of God. In the second half of verse 14, Jesus says, Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Jesus the Messiah is the source of eternal life. Jesus Jesus says that he is the Messiah right here in this passage. Belief in Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, And his death and resurrection as the breaking down of all barriers between us and God. The acceptance of the Holy Spirit into our lives, into our hearts. This is the spring of water that wells up to eternal life. And what's incredible is that Jesus doesn't say that this water can only be found by those with three degrees. Or it can only be acquired with great wealth or greatness of social standing. The water that quenches our deepest spiritual thirst is free and freely given to all. This passage is an invitation to drink deeply from the well of the Holy Spirit, to satisfy our thirst in the living water of the Spirit. That longing you've always had to feel loved and accepted, quench it in the Holy Spirit. That need to know there is more to life than what we can see. Quench it in the Holy Spirit. The need to feel safe. Quench it in the Spirit. The desire to have a purpose. The longing to really know who you are. That need to be free from fear. Quench it in the Holy Spirit. It is only by drinking from the true well of living water, that our deepest needs will be satisfied. And remember remember what I was saying uh, at the beginning about our sense of thirst actually lagging behind our body's um, level of dehydration. Perhaps it's the same with our spiritual hydration. By the time we feel thirsty and in need, we are already dehydrated. Staying hydrated is something we have to do constantly, isn't it? We have to drink all the time. 
I think it's kind of the same with the Holy Spirit. The well is there. It will never run dry, but we, we have to keep drinking. Don't wait until you feel desperate, alone and far from God to drink from the well. Come regularly, daily, hourly even, and drink. Jesus says, whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. I'm going to say a prayer in a moment and I want to invite you to pray it in your heart with me if you want to. Maybe you have known the life-giving, thirst-quenching power of the Holy Spirit, but it's been a long time since you've drunk deeply. Maybe you've never tasted from the spring of living water. Wherever you are, if you would like, I invite you to join with me in drinking from the well of living water. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, you are the one true source of living water. We spend our lives going from one thing to another, trying to quench our thirst, and our thirst can only be quenched in the purity and beauty of your deep water. I come to you now to drink deeply the water that you give. Come and fill me up to overflowing. Amen. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare your living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence lord
So as we come now towards the close of our service, let's pray this final prayer together. Would you join with me in the words in bold at the bottom of your screen? Father, help me to live this week to the full, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help me to give myself away to others, being kind to everyone I meet. Spirit, help me to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all I do and say. Amen. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. The Apostle Paul says, whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So go now and serve your God in confidence and trust. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Have a wonderful week.